to come into God's presence just to linger with the one who set me free as I lift my eyes and see his awesome glory I remember who he is and bow the knee You live to love and glorify me. 
his hand he holds the power of creation with his voice he spoke and all things came to be yet he hears each simple prayer i bring before him when i humbly seek his face and bow the knee Did I carry my coffee upstairs?
Good morning. Welcome to the service of Walnut Creek Baptist Church. And I know that you're all watching at home. And if you'd like to, stand with us as we begin our singing with Behold Our God. God. We're glad to have all of you watching this morning. We know many of you are watching on Facebook, our website, or YouTube, and we want to pray for this special service. We want to pray for our country. I want to pray specifically for our fellowship here and our community that God would be honored during this special, special service today on uh, March 15, 2020. Now let's pray together, can we? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we do pray for this service. We pray for the comfort that can be given only from you. And Lord, we thank you for the privilege it is to worship you. We know many are worshiping in their living rooms and in their bedrooms and watching on their flat screens and iPads and phones. And Lord, we just pray that everyone that is listening this morning would worship you in spirit and and in truth. Give us the comfort that can only come from you. Lord, give us the grace and the mercy to know that you're in charge. And Lord, guide and direct as only you can in all of our living rooms and bedrooms and homes this morning. And Lord, for those of us here in an empty auditorium that are putting this worship service together, I pray that you would bless and guide our efforts as we strive to honor you and everything that is said and done. And it's in Christ's name I pray, amen and amen. I'm going to have my wife come forward. Most of you know in our church we were going to have ministry focus Sunday. We're obviously not going to have that today, but we're going to run through just a few ministries just for a few minutes before we continue on our worship service. 
those of you who are watching this morning that are not a part of our church, this just gives you a little flavor of the volunteer ministry and the serving ministry at our church. So Anne's going to come and go through some of our uh, primary areas of need in our ministries this morning before we continue our service. Anne? Well, good morning. I'm glad to be here to share this with you. Um, we are a very serving, servant-minded church, and we're very thankful for that. And so we're going to just go through what you, were, you received. We mailed these out two weeks ago for our regular attenders, and there is a perforated pull, a tear-off here. You can fill it out and either mail it in, or we're going to have it up on our website or on, on the app this week that you can even sign up that way um, just to get involved as we continue forward this year with the various ministries. And there's many opportunities to serve in our church, and we're so thankful for those that do serve. And we ask that everyone uh, have a burden to get plugged in. As my husband often says, if you don't come to church to get involved, but you generally don't stay if you're not. And we want everyone involved in serving and, and ministering to our community. Uh, first of all, we have the choir. As you see the special music here today, we normally have a full choir, and that's a blessing. They sing in both the morning services, and um, that's something that we would like if you have that gift from God to sing, to join our choir. Uh, we also have an orchestra, so if you can play a musical instrument, um, please see Caleb uh, Lancaster about that, and he will set you up in our orchestra. We have special music and offertory music as well. Uh, when we would love to have people involved in that, administering during the offertory in song or uh, on an instrument, and that's something a part of our music ministry. We do have uh, those that are involved in help, helping to decorate our church uh, seasonally and um, for a special occasion. So if you have that as a, a talent that you can use, we'd love to get you plugged in for that. Also, we have quite a few people who clean our church to, to keep it uh, looking nice and clean and presentable. Uh, we just did a very deep cleaning yesterday, and we're going to continue doing that this week. So if you can help with that, uh, we'd love to have you a part of that ministry. We have, uh, I think it's nine acres or so that we have to keep up in yard work. So those that can uh, mow grass and trim and weed and those kind of things, we will start that up here in the next month or two. So that's a ministry of our church. And along with that, we have several flower beds that we like to keep maintained and uh, planted with beautiful flowers and uh, weeded. And so if you're interested in that, we've had families take on a flower bed in the past, and that's been a real blessing. Uh, we have a kitchen ministry. We have on Sunday nights after our seed groups, we have uh, food fellowships every Sunday night and various uh Sea groups bring the food, but we need people to help serve it and clean up. And for other events that we have uh, food served, we need those that can help with that. Um, so that's an option if you feel led to do that. We have every Sunday morning at 9.30 and 11, we have junior church. Uh, we have a rotation of helpers each month for the 11 o'clock service. And if you're interested in helping with, ju uh, with junior church, we'd love to get you plugged in there. Um, in the summer, we have Kids for Christ, and that's a summer Wednesday night program. And during our Wednesday evening service, we have something for the children. We split them by ages, and we have appropriate lessons and activities, and they get to go outside for games for that. So we need help for that. So if you're interested in helping uh, in the summer for that ministry. Obviously, we have a, a lot of babies in our nursery, and we need help with those of our youngest attenders, and it gives the moms a chance to come into worship. And so if you're interested in helping in the nursery, we could use, uh, I think we have maybe 50 to 60 on a rotation for that, and that's a big ministry. Awana, we run Awana through the school year from September to May, and we have cubbies and sparks and truth and training, and we need helpers for that each year. So if you're interested in that, that's another opportunity to serve. And then our, one of our big ministries this summer is our uh, VBS program, and this year is Mystery Island, and we need about 60 volunteers for this. So uh, we have uh, in the evenings from 6 to 9, we have VBS, and it's in July, and we need quite a few workers for that. So that would be a great opportunity if you feel led to serve there. The sound room, we are very thankful for those that work in our sound room because right now they're helping with this service, and they help us each week to – uh, work with that and keep it going. Uh, ushers, we need ushers at our doors to greet people. So if you're interested in helping with that, 
And then we have um, one of our biggest ministries coming up is our Freedom Challenge Race, and that's coming up the end of May, May 25th, and we need many, many volunteers for that. So that's an opportunity you can serve for our community. And then other uh, uh, ministries that really uh, are just uh, come up as needed, we have Operation Christmas Child. That goes on throughout the year and various uh, times that we do for that. Corinthian Connections is our Ladies Monthly Fellowship. That's an area you can sign up for to serve. And then our Men's Prayer Breakfast, and uh, that actually the men will meet this Friday at, at 6.30 at the Lodge. So those are some of the ministries of our church that we would love for you to get involved in and serve the Lord uh, through our ministry. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. And I just want to uh, remind a few of you that uh, we are under, we will be having online services just uh, today and next week. We will decide if that continues beyond that. But just because our community has been restricted to large groups doesn't mean that you're quarantined. In other words, groups can meet. Our men's uh, prayer time will be meeting this Friday, and we'll get some information about that. Corinthian Connections will be the Bible study, I'm sorry, be meeting Tuesday at the Lodge. All activities in our church will be at the Lodge during this uh, time of uh, where we will not be holding public services. And I'd like all of you to uh, look at the screen, if you would. We want you to give online right now. We have no other way to collect the funds for our tithes and offerings today. You can use the app. You can go to wcbaptist.com. Or some of you can just grab your camera, do it right now, grab your phone, take a picture of that QR code. And once you take a picture of that QR code, it will direct you right to our online giving app, and you can give right there. If you uh, would like to mail in your offering, you have one of our prepaid envelopes, please take care of that. And if you would like to bring it by the church, if you would call the church uh, office and uh, let us know, we'll set up a time where we can meet you to give your tithes and offerings. We thank the Lord for your faithfulness in giving to the Lord's work. And without your giving, we would not be able to go on through this period of time. And right now, I, I believe we're going to get have the offering. We have, so why don't you just spend a few minutes Prepare the offering, and then we'll come to the remainder of our service. In life or death, I'll not despair. My Let's take our Bibles out and we'll be looking in the Old Testament book of Exodus this morning. Exodus chapter 18, we'll be looking at verses 13 through 24. Exodus chapter 18, verses 13 through 24. The word of God says, And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people, 
And the people stood by Moses from the morning unto the evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone, and all the people stand by thee from morning unto evening? And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another. And I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee. For this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law, and did all that he had said. And may the Lord add his blessing to this reading of his holy word this morning. We're going to conclude our singing this morning with Before the Throne of God Above. And our pastor is coming now with this morning's message. I want to thank all of you for watching this morning. And uh, if you have access to our app or you are a recipient of email, you have the outline for the message. And we will hope after the uh, message this morning that there's some questions you can uh, 
review with your children regarding the message. I think they're very practical, and it's on our app as well. If you want to download that or look at it right now, uh, I will go through this message. You can follow along with me. And, um, and the questions you might want to review around lunchtime today and uh, maybe in devotions as well. And we'll be doing that every single uh, service as long as we are having online services only. And maybe we'll continue that afterwards as well. I do want to say a few things about today. Today we're meeting in the most unusual circumstances. Uh, in the 20 years I've been the pastor of this church, I, there's nothing that even remotely comes close to today. Uh, totally different circumstances, but they were unusual at 9-11. And I want to give a special note to all the children and those who are watching this morning that have children. We received uh, a call yesterday from a parent that says, my children are somewhat upset. They don't have school. Their church has been, quote, unquote, canceled. Uh, everything in the uh, retail market seems to be out of control. And the parent did not know what to say to their child. I will say this, Joshua 1.9 says, as Joshua is comforting the nation of Israel, he says, Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, be there need, be there need thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. I want to encourage all the children, we have adults making decisions. This time you have away from our church and Awana and your friends and your school is to protect you and others. And we have people in civil government that I believe are doing a wonderful job as this virus and what the effects of that um, are still somewhat unknown. I want to tell you that all of us, that large groups have been prohibited for at least a couple of weeks, and we're obeying by that. We're just under the 250 uh, criterion, and we decided as a church and based upon our community, it was best that we... Um, go with the guidelines which, this, which has been suggested by the Center of Disease Control and our governor and our state leaders. So I want to open up with say, stating all that. This is a time that our church does not have to be quarantined. We can go out in small groups and serve our community with a spirit of uh, understanding, a spirit of willingness to help. And I want everyone to know that. Small groups are okay. Praying is okay. Going to the parks are okay. The last thing, ladies and gentlemen, look here. We need to be doing as people, whether you're a part of our church or you're listening this morning, is hunkering down, streaming Netflix for two or three weeks. That is what the devil would have us to do. Let's make a difference during this time of need. We can comfort one another as we will remember this just like, I remembered a, a generation ago, remember the, the Kennedy assassination, that those who remembered the Vietnam War, that those who remembered all of the things in the past. This is a memory, may not right now, and it will not be necessarily a good memory, but a time to reflect on where Jesus Christ is in our culture and in our community. And it's going to be a time for people like us to boldly stand up and help a community that is very much questioning what is going on. And I want all of us to follow through with that the next couple of weeks. There's one more thing I'll say before I get into the message. And aren't you glad that I'm not preaching a normal service because I can go as long as I want here without anybody walking out. Uh, so, But uh, one more thing I'll say in the message. We are going to have a live Facebook Q&A, and we want you to submit to us ideas you have for the community. We've got a lot of them that have been coming across our plate. One is handing out leaflets to neighbors of what we can do to help, and there's many more ideas. We'll be going live with that soon, possibly as early as tomorrow night, and we want you to tune in and to give us questions how you can serve the community as a Christian, a New Testament Christian, during this period of time. Well, our text this morning is dealing with the situation that Moses Moses was tired. Moses was leading a group of people, and he was doing it by himself. And he really was very much under pressure. He was stressed out. 
and he did not know what to do. His father-in-law, Jephro, gave him some advice in the text that Caleb Lancaster read just a few moments ago. And I guess I'll look at Proverbs chapter 19, verse number 21, before we lead in that. It says, there are many devices in a man's heart. And where is God? Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. So this morning I want to preach on a united church. A united church in a community. A united church that will stand up and be used of God in a time of uncertainty. The first thing I want to say as we look at this text this morning, a united church will enlist help. And that's what Moses was told to do. Look at verse number 13, please. please. Exodus chapter 18, verse number 13. Look what it says. And it came to pass on the morrow, the next day, Moses set to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from morning unto evening. In other words, Moses was the man of God in that period of time, in that dispensation. And Moses was the one when people had questions, concerns, or problems, they would literally line up and come to him one by one by one to hear what the man of God says. Now, I want everybody to think about this. You're not in the auditorium, but look at your TV right now. Look at your iPad. That's an interesting statement, right? We're not the only ones. We can enlist help. And what Moses was being told by his father-in-law, most of what you're doing can be delegated to others. You don't have to do it by yourself. It was a daunting task. Moses, the man of God, was swarmed with providing answers to the problems of the people. It was overwhelming. He's the only one. And ladies and gentlemen, pride will tell me and you that only I can do it. We have an enormous task. And we find here the possibility of burnout is real. Now you might say, pastors, how does that apply to today? We need to enlist help. We need to raise up people that will assist and delegate and help in a community that is not really sure what is going on. There are two extremes of what's happened this week. As this unfolding drama has taken place. And yes, no doubt about it, do not doubt me on this, I believe it has been over-dramatized in some areas, and I 100% believe it. But I also believe we should not shove it aside. There is a real concern by real scientists and real people who do this for a living, and I think we should stay in our lane and listen to them and not try to second-guess and believe conspiracy theories about what they may and may not know. But I will say this, ladies and gentlemen, there's a time right now where we can delegate. We can have a time where we are in the community. It's not one person's job. It's not the pastor's job. It's all of our job. I want you to look at verse number 18 of that text, please. Verse number 18, please. It says there, and this is what was being said to Moses by his father-in-law, that was surely wear away. You can't do it all yourself. Both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee, thou art not able to perform it, perform it thyself alone. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, think about this. We have people that are stressed out, people that do not know what to do. You go into Walmart, into Target, into Giant Eagle here lately, it's like people are unsure of what is happening. And it's us, the Christians, us who can bring a calming spirit that God is in charge. God is in control. And in order to do that, we need to delegate. We need to get out into the hedges and the highways over the next two weeks. And we start with the people that we know best, our family, and work outward. And I'll share more about that in a minute. We must work together as neighbors and families. Times like this we should pull together. We should be the steady hand that is looked at during these times. And by the way, this quote-unquote crisis may end in a few days. It may end in a few weeks. We do not know. 
But what God would have us to do is to be recognized as the steady hand that could be depended upon during this crisis. We must work together as neighbors and families. Times like this, it should not be anti-Trump or pro-Trump or Democrat or Republican. It should be we're Christian. We should be the steady hand. We find here that others must be given a chance to serve. It says that in verse number 20. Look what it says in verse 20, please. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws. And thou shalt show them the way wherein they must walk and the work they must do. What Moses is saying, what is being said to Moses, is it's time to teach others that they may serve as well. This is a time for us to pull together. Not since 9-11 have we had so much going on in the community in our lives. Moses was given advice, it's time to delegate and to pitch in. And that's what we as a church are going to do, and that's what we want you to do, is to help pitch in in our community. We hold back the plans of God, ladies and gentlemen, if we try to do it all ourselves. We should look to others to get involved, and there's others that are waiting to be enlisted during this special time. Ann and Fred Ayers, for those that's my name is Fred, my wife who was up here a minute ago is Ann. I'm the pastor, and obviously she's the pastor's wife. In 1991, we were in a church, we were just sitting. And then we got enlisted to serve in an Awana program on a Wednesday night. And it was that willingness for somebody to enlist me, to ask me to help, to give me the opportunity to lead an Awana program and teach to some little children that led to eventually my calling to be a pastor. And ladies and gentlemen, it's for us to enlist others, our children, our friends, and our family, and to help. Let us use this time to ask someone to help. You may recruit someone to help with babysitting. You may recruit someone to help getting senior citizens groceries. You may check in on your neighbors, which my wife and I just started doing. Sending notes out and saying, look, we're the neighbors down the road. If there's anything we can do, we want to give a cup of water in Jesus' name. It's time to enlist people. What a change that would be. Maybe you can recruit someone to help you. In verses 21 and 22, we find, he says, Moreover, thou shalt provide out of the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, and having covetousness, and places such over them, to be the rulers of thousands, and rulers of hundreds, and rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people all season, and it shall be that every great matter shall bring unto thee. In other words, Moses would handle the big issues, but every small matter they shall judge. It shall be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. So we find here in the first point this morning of our text is a united church here, ladies and gentlemen, a united church is one that enlists help, enlisting help. Uses this time to ask someone to help out. We can't do it alone. I don't know where what is going to happen in our discussions here. We had absolutely, if you would have told me Wednesday night we would not have a Sunday morning service, I would have told you I can't believe that. Things started to turn a little bit on Thursday. When I heard um, what was going on in the community, I said we need to be careful about what we do. And by the way, I am not criticizing any church or organization that had a service today. I wasn't saying for this church, we felt it was better for us to limit the larger crowds and leave the decisions of that to those who work in civil government, as the Bible says in the book of Romans. So a united church is one that enlists help. The united church, secondly, a united church, and you can find this on your handout, has many talents or uses many talents. There were many trades that would be used in the Construction of the tabernacle. Go to Exodus chapter 35, please. Exodus chapter 35. And we see that Moses enlisted many talents. And ladies and gentlemen, just think about the, those, the maybe the hundreds that are watching right now online. Think about the talents that are in your living room. 
from the small child who can barely write, has some cryptic note that she can write to a senior citizen to encourage them, to teenagers that can go by and maybe pick up the trash or take the trash out or help a senior citizen around the house during this time or maybe bring food and deliver food that they're not able to get out or maybe they're a little frightened because of their age and diabetes or some type of a respiratory issue. They don't want to go to Walmart, but yet they can have a teenager deliver food to them. There's talent, and it doesn't take a lot of talent. God doesn't need the qualified. He just wants those that are able to go. He qualifies the call. So we see it here in chapter 35, verse number 10, every wise-hearted among you shall come and make all the Lord hath commanded. And then he lists a group of talented people. He says those who can make his tent, his covering, his tashes, his boards, his bars, his pillars, and his sockets. The tabernacle was going to be made, was going to be built. Now, ladies and gentlemen, look here. And guess what? God supplied the people to do it. Now, everybody look here. Now, think about this. And I want you to think of this as you listen to this message. All of us have talent. What is God calling you to do? No doubt. We have sanitized this whole church. We had people yesterday, I mean, this thing is the cleanest it's ever been. It's been wiped down, and we're going to keep it that way at least for another week and use our other building during other small group meetings. And we had people that came in and said, I can, I can take a cloth. I can wipe things. I can do that. What talent do you have that needs to be used during this time? Or is your talent and my talent going to be used watching the Disney Plus channel, Netflix, or Amazon waiting for this thing to end. No doubt we have talents that are needed. We find in the book of Nehemiah there was a list in chapter 2 of all the trades that were used, the craftsmen, the tailors, the silversmiths, the carpenters, the millwrights, those that even prepared food were listed. God has given us many talents, many talents to use. If God shows us a need, he will provide the right people to help. And you and I have talents, ladies and gentlemen, no doubt that are needed. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I want to show you a, a verse that Paul wrote to the church at Corinth regarding there are many parts to a body. Many parts to a body. I think as the pastor of this church, I mean, just to put this service on, right now you don't know this, there are several people in our sound room between the internet, the live streaming, the music, the piano, just to put the service on is maybe up to seven to eight people just right now. This would not happen. I couldn't get up here and do it without their help. So there are many parts to the body. Look what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For the body is one and hath many members, and all the members that, of that body, and all the members of that body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Look at verse 14 of 1 Corinthians 12. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not of the hand, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? If the ear shall say, because I am not of the eye, am I not of the body? Therefore, is it not of the body? That's a rhetorical question that, of course, that's ridiculous to say that. If the whole body were an eye, where, where were the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where are the smelling? But God has set members, now listen to this, every one of them of the body as it has pleased him. God has given all of us talent. And right now is the time to step up and say, enlist. Everyone of the wise, look what it says. In, it says there in verse number 18, let me read that again. But now have God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. Interesting. All of us have been given talents. I have in my notes, and I read this, and I am convicted about this on my own. You know, sometimes you just want to hunker down and be done. I don't believe that's now the time. 
Let me tell you some things that aren't closed right now. There are a lot of things closed, right? I mean, most of the businesses, I was talking to a businessman that uh, runs a company that I know really well, and he was telling me we're shutting down. We all run off huge iMacs and large computers, and we don't have notebook computers for our employees. We're not like some of the other high-tech companies that we can send people home to work. And, and he was saying, I don't know what to do. He was somewhat beside himself. And this is a company that has multi-million dollars of receipts every year, and they are absolutely beside themselves. What do we do? And we have people in our church that have been sent home, some that work for maybe larger corporations like Erie Insurance or others, have their notebook computer, and they work away and get paid. But listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, and please don't miss this. For every one of them, there's three or four that may not get paid that's sitting home right now and doesn't know what to do. And maybe that's you. Maybe God would have us to make a difference in other people's lives. My wife gave me an example, and I'm going to be very careful how specific I get because there are a lot of people watching this, but I thought it was her heart. She says, I have somebody that does my nails. And she barely gets by. My wife has an appointment with her. And she said, because of infections and everything and the blowing up of what is happening, they probably are not going to be able to stay open. Or at best, they're going to sprint by them a little. Why don't I bring her a card, give her a Visa gift card for X number of dollars, and say, Jesus loves you, and here's a track from our church, and we're praying. Now, all of us, everybody here has a person like that that crosses your path. And maybe you're the person that does the nails, so to speak. Maybe you're the person that is in need. Why don't you reach out and help somebody else as well? Luke chapter 12, it says in verse 48, the last part of the verse, it says, for whom has committed much of him will they ask more. In other words, for much is given, much is required. Think about that. Develop your abilities. It means taking the, it helps us take the focus off of me and off of you. No doubt about it. And we need to do that. It helps us to look at others. Look at Luke chapter 19. Could you go to Luke 19? I meant to tell you that a minute ago. Luke chapter 19. I really enjoy preaching to an empty auditorium. This is really fun. You know, they often said ministry would be really good if it wasn't for the people. Well, I got that today. I have a ministry with no people. And that was supposed to be funny out there. For those of you watching, that was what we call a pastor heirs mini ha-ha. All right. See, I normally hear something here, but it's deathly silent as I speak. But look what it says in Luke chapter 19. Look what it says in verse number 23. Wherefore, then thou gavest not the money unto the bank, am I coming? Now, this is the story of the man who hoarded the money, who did not use his talents. And he is being chastised by the Lord. It says in verse 23, and I'm going toward the end of that particular story. It says, Wherefore thou gavest not my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have acquired my own with usury. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I say unto him, that every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, that shall be taken away from him. In other words, we have a statement sometimes, use it or lose it. God has given us the talents and the possessions to share. God has given us talents. Let's not let this week go by. And the practical application of this somewhat unusual message I'm preaching today, which is not necessarily normally expository as we're used to, is that we ought to use the talents we have during the next two to three weeks and what God would have us to do in our community. Lastly, a united church, and this all kind of ties together, please, commits to serve. I want you to go to the gospel records of Jesus in the upper room. The gospel records, Matthew chapter 20. 
Jesus Christ gave a great example of servant. He would wash the feet of the disciples. Peter, if you know the story, said, Lord, not my feet. And he says, no, I will wash your feet too, Peter. And look what it says in verse number 26, please. Number 26. And it says in verse number 26, and I think I have 28 on the screen, but let's look at verse number 26. It says there, but it shall not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And then we go down to verse number 28. Even as the Son of Man, that's a reference to Jesus Christ, came not to be ministered unto. Have you ever noticed that sometimes because of pride and self-worth that we believe only we're to be ministered to? But look what he said. But to minister and give his ransom for many. John chapter 13 says, The new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know ye are my disciples, if you have love one to another. We call that one of the birthmarks of being a Christian. We see when we have a baby or you're born, you maybe have a certain birthmark. It's, a, it's some type of a identification on an arm or maybe the back of your neck or something like that early on, and we call that a birthmark. One of the distinguishing characteristics of a Christian is that we love one another. And how do we love one another, ladies and gentlemen? is by serving. We're known by many things, no doubt about it. Some of you are known by your vocation, what you do. When they think of your name, they think, he is a blank, a doctor, a lawyer, maybe he works in a factory. You're known by that. Some of us are known, when we think of you, we think of what sports team you like. Pittsburgh Steelers, unfortunately, or the Cleveland Browns, that would be good. Anyway, you may be known by whether you're a servant. But Jesus said, excuse me, Jesus said, we should be known by the way we serve and love one another. Our challenge to you, ladies and gentlemen, this week as I get ready to close, is that we do this. As that we roll up our sleeves and get dirty. And maybe it'll be some offenses that'll be taken the wrong way, but at least you can bring it to God and say, God, I want to be used by you during this time of the second and third week in March of 2020. I want to look back and say, I was faithful to you and to your work here in Erie, Pennsylvania. There's so much that can be done. Meal trains we're setting up on our app to serve meals to others. If you have not signed up for one, you can do that right now. I think of all of the medical workers, some in our church, that their life has been turned upside down. They're not getting time off. And they have kids that were in school, and now they have to decide what they're going to do with their kids. Let me ask you this. For those of you who know those people, they're your family. They're your friend. Call them up as soon as this message is over and says, I will watch your children even if it's the third shift in the middle of the night so you can do what you're required to do. And I can give a list that goes on and on and on. Maybe we meet in small groups and pray. We're going to have a men's prayer meeting this upcoming Friday in the lodge at 6.30 a.m., our normal prayer time. Today, ladies and gentlemen, as I close this message, families and friends, those who are watching this, here's what I want you to do. Today, our president has called this a national day of prayer. Why don't we end this service, family, friends, co-workers, praying for our country, praying for the world, praying that God would use this awful virus to bring people to him. There's not a person listening here that doesn't know somebody that's hurting. We've heard people that want to visit families and friends going through major surgeries, but all the hospitals are on lockdown, and husbands and wives can't even visit their spouse that are getting major surgeries tomorrow.
They can't even visit them. That person is going alone into surgery tomorrow without any family members able to visit them. Ladies and gentlemen, the compassion and love of God's people for these people, at least we could pray and ask them, what can we do to help? Or we can sit by and waste it away, endless hours of complaining, watching TV, and waiting for this to end. I want to tell you, God's a God of sovereignty and grace. And he knows the beginning from the end. And I trust in his mercy and his sovereignty. And for whatever reason this has been allowed, let it come and be a part of our lives. I'm going to close in prayer right now. We will end the service. Actually, I will have, we'll have a piano. Why don't we do this? We'll have the piano play. Iris will play on the piano. And what we'll do is I'll have you pray for just a few minutes there in your, um, in your home. And then after that, I will come back and I'll say a closing prayer. And then what I would like you to do, if you have the notes from this message, to review it with your family, to go through the questions, and then make this a national day of prayer, you should pray in addition to this in your family today. Maybe call up others. So let's pray together. As Iris begins to play, let's pray and ask God to use us during this special time in need. Let's close in prayer, and I have a few closing moments. I'd like to keep the streaming going during that as well. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your goodness, and we do pray for especially those in the medical profession that are dealing with um, daunting circumstances of schedules and time. And Lord, I pray for many others, our, our civil service employees that work in the fire and police, and for those that aren't able to take off. I lay pray also for our retail workers that are dealing with the deluge of people and sometimes problems. And Lord, give them grace. And Lord, help us, specifically Christian people, to not add to the problems but be a solution as the Christians were in going to the lepers in the early church or going to the slave trading and freeing the slaves back in the Underground Railroad are standing up for those that are disadvantaged and hurt and giving a cup of water in Jesus' name. Let us stand up for you, for righteousness, godliness, holiness, and lead others to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we'll thank you for it. In Christ's name I pray, amen and amen. Just a couple of things I want you to know if you look at your, it's on the screen now, is that number one, God is in control. He is in control. That's what I want you to know. What I'm asking you to be is be who God made you 
to do. Use your talents for him. And he said, I'm not sure what to do. Let me ask this. If you get alone with God and pray, I guarantee you, you'll have an answer. And what am I asking you to do? Serve others and be a light in this dark world. If you're a part of our church, we are going to be communicating with you every day, seven days a week, primarily through Facebook Live and our website. If you want to know what's going on, we have made, the staff has, and I have made a determination to let you know every day what we're doing and what you can do. We're not going to leave you alone, and, uh, and, and that's a good thing, I hope. So uh, we'll see. So we want you to be a part of that. Our Facebook site at Walnut Creek Baptist can be used as well. I appreciate those in the sound room and all those that helped us take uh, place today. There will be no seed groups tonight, no Wednesday night service at all, and we will not have service next Sunday morning except if you're live again, and we'll fill you in if any changes come to that. God bless you. Take care. Have a wonderful day, and we look forward to seeing and hearing from all of you this week. Take care.